Thank you. It's really great to be here with all you today. I, I apologize for being a little bit late. The flight was a little bit late. We connected in Chicago, so we were a little bit late getting back in here. But, uh, we got here, so that's a good news. It's an honor to be here with all you, though, and, and with the congressman today. It, uh, uh, I'll tell you this. I mean, he is going to be the next great senator from Arizona. And I'm proud to be here today on behalf of NRA's 4 million members nationwide, including more than 60,000 people from Arizona that are members, to announce the National Rifle Association's full endorsement for Jeff Flake for the United States Senate. He has had an incredibly strong record in Congress. He has a proven record of commitment to the Second Amendment, to advancing the freedom of American citizens. Over that period, he's earned an A rating from the National Rifle Association. There have been so many pieces of legislation, I can hardly get through them all, but he has been either sponsored or co-sponsored or helped us pass or stand up to the people that wanted to ban guns and restrict hunting in this country. But I'll name a few right here. He's co-sponsored legislation to preserve recreational shooting on BLM lands. He's voted to promote our hunting heritage and shooting sports. He's voted in favor of the rights of law-abiding Americans with valid carry permits to carry a firearm for personal protection nationwide. And that's really important. I mean, it's no secret. You, you know, many of you know, there are 25,000 violent crimes a week in this country. And what freedom is more important than the right to protect yourself from some criminal that ought to be in jail and yet is out walking the streets? And uh, so that's an important freedom that he's been in the forefront of making sure that Americans are safe. Next election, I have to tell you, in a couple of weeks, it's a crucial one. The next president is probably going to have one to three appointments on the Supreme Court. He's already appointed two of the most rabidly anti-Second Amendment justices in U.S. history to the Supreme Court. <coughs> the good news is, as United States Senator, I don't have any doubt that if we end up in that situation and President Obama tries to stack the court with another justice that will repeal the individual right of American citizens to own firearms and say it's only the government's right, he will be there voting for freedom, voting for the Second Amendment, and voting to protect your rights and making sure that justice never sits on the Supreme Court. The United Nations, I mean, it, it, it seems like it couldn't even be possible, but they're trying to get all in, into all this. You know that uh, we had to go out and testify at the UN over the summer. They are dead set on writing some type of treaty that restricts civilian ownership of firearms worldwide. It's just a club of governments. Not a, one of those countries has a bill of rights like we do have in the United States. And I'll guarantee you this, he's already said it, he's been out front on it. If there's any UN treaty put before the United States Senate that restricts your right as citizens of Arizona to own a firearm, he will be there to oppose it. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> so the stakes are high. I, everyone needs to turn out, get as many friends and relatives and fellow sportsmen and fellow gun owners and supporters of the Second Amendment, your neighbors. Get them to the polls because this is election about freedom. More than any other election I know in my lifetime, this is an election where all of our rights, all of our freedoms are on the line. And all means each and every one of us as American citizens. We're NRA members, we're Second Amendment supporters, we're Americans, and in this election, by God, we need to be all in. And that means going to the polls on election day and voting to make your, sure your next senator from Arizona is Jeff Flake.
thank you all for being here. Thank you, Benny. Uh, Benny does so much. And his wife, Judy, where's Judy? Thank you so much. These are two chairs in Pima County, and they do such a wonderful job uh, with so much down there. And thank you, Wayne. Thanks for all you do for this country, for all you do to preserve our Second Amendment rights. Let's give him a round of applause. You know, traveling around the state, I uh, see the effects of the Obama administration's effort to overreach on regulation in just about every area. Uh, we see it, uh, you know, Arizona is 85% publicly owned between state land and federal land and tribal land. There's very little that is privately owned. And so regulation by the federal government has a disproportionate effect on a state like Arizona. We're seeing it, for example, uh, in Maricopa County with dust regulations, where the federal government just can't seem to recognize that an occasional dust event is just that, an occasional <laughs> dust event. And uh, to try to get them to recognize that as something else. Now we're having to fight the EPA uh, trying to impose uh, regional haze standards on the Navajo generating station that would cause that to shut down. And, and that would be devastating for the state in terms of our ability to pump water from the Central Arizona project, our water and power rates, employment on the Navajo Indian Reservation, uh, your source of water if you live in any city. Um, it, it, uh, this is really important stuff. But it's also in the area of Second Amendment rights where the Obama administration has overreached. And Wayne mentioned uh, with regard to recreational shooting, with Arizona being 85% publicly owned, unless we can make use of our public lands for recreational shooting, what choice do we have? And so if you live in Tucson, if you don't have access to the Ironwood uh, area, the Ironwood National Monument, where do you go? Um, if these monument areas are shut down, then we lose that opportunity. Uh, when, that was, when it was proposed earlier last year, the proposal came to shut off recreational shooting in the Sonoran Desert National Monument, 500,000 acres and also the Ironwood National Monument, 129,000 acres, to just shut off recreational shooting. And, uh, and so we, we took action, we immediately sent a letter, the Obama administration signed by a number of my colleagues saying don't do this, and then we drafted legislation in my office and dropped it in, got it in the sportsman's package and passed by the House of Representatives. The block was <laughs> backed away from their effort and said that the Sonoran National Monument will remain open to recreational shooting. So we're proud of that accomplishment. With Ironwood, it's still in the works. We're still working there, but more than likely, they'll have to back off of that decision as well. So we're proud of the, uh, the, uh, the efforts that we've made, and we've, we're proud of the gains that we've made in that area. But there's much more to do. Uh, over the next four years, over the next six years, into the future, we're going to see efforts by administrations, by courts, and others to restrict your Second Amendment right. We've got to make sure that we have people in the United States Senate who will stand up to it. And also, as Wayne mentioned, the United States Senate ratifies treaties, <coughs> treaties by the United Nations, an organization not exactly friendly to Second Amendment rights. We've got to make sure that we have people who understand that and will stand up to it. So I appreciate all you do in this room. There are so many who who support so many good candidates and good causes. I appreciate your support for my campaign. I appreciate this endorsement from the NRA. This is, I, I value a lot of endorsements I get, none more than this one. Uh, this is uh, very much appreciated and very helpful. Uh, there are, across this state, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents who value their Second Amendment rights. Be sure you get to them. Be sure you tell them what's at stake in these elections. You know. We in the House of Representatives, the Republicans, have been trying for three and a half years uh, to get this administration uh, to, one, present a reasonable budget, <laughs> to get the Senate to actually pass a budget, <laughs> and, uh, and we have failed miserably to convince them that that's the direction you need to go. But the beauty of an election year is you don't have to convince them anymore, you just have to replace them. <laughs> and so that's why this election is so important. Let me just say one more thing about the United States Senate and the singular importance of taking control of that body. Uh, you know, it's been now three and a half years since the Senate has passed a budget. Imagine in your family going three and a half years without passing a budget. 
The last time the Senate passed a budget, somebody pointed out the other day, the iPad, Apple's iPad, had not been invented yet. <laughs> so, we're now on the third generation of Apple iPad and still no Senate budget. <laughs> what effect that has, and the, the obvious thing, is that you can't discipline your spending. Uh, but what you don't see, but you feel here, anybody who's in business in particular, or those who value your Second Amendment rights, is that when you don't have a Senate budget, the House and the Senate don't go through regular order. Regular order means that we pass appropriation bills one by one, 12 of them, one per, per agency. That's how the House and the Senate, that's how the Congress exercises its power of the purse. That's when we tell the EPA, you can regulate this under the Clean Air Act, but you can't shut down the Navajo Generating Station. That's where you put guardrails around the agencies, telling the BLM, sorry, you can't close off recreational shooting in these national monument areas. And, and I can go ahead and pass amendments like that in the House or attach report language, but we know that the Senate's not going to pass a budget, and we're going to do one big spending bill at the end of the year, one vote up or down, no amendments. And that allows the agencies to just run amok and regulate to their heart's content, whether it's labor regulation, financial regulation, environmental regulation, Second Amendment regulation. That's why we've got to change control of the U.S. Senate. We can't afford to have a rubber stamp for Barack Obama. We can't afford to have someone whose first vote will be for Harry Reid as majority leader. So thank you for being here. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for your help on my campaign.